Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. At my signal, unleash hell. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. This is the plan that I have repeatedly warned about, to take the tools of oppression used to tackle the coronavirus and use them all, lockdowns, forced business closures, exclusion zones, isolation, we heard, we heard Angela Marsden earlier, businesses shut down, isolation at home, all of that, all of those measures, including destroying private property rights and private income in order to tackle the climate crisis. Now is a historical moment, a time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. Rebalancing investment, harnessing science and technology, and advancing the transition to net zero emissions, all elements of the Great Reset are fundamental to building the future we need. And that last one was the clown Guterres, who was at the Climate Ambition Summit, telling us the world is going to cook by three and a half degrees or something by the end of the century. Yeah, right. This Great Reset is as serious and as dangerous a threat to our prosperity, to your prosperity and your freedom, as we have faced in decades. With these powerful bodies, including the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund and even Prince Charles boasting, yes, boasting that within a, few, within a few short years, yes, their words, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Remember, this is not me saying this, this is them. They are even running ads for the Great Reset. A mm, handful of countries will dominate. I wonder which ones they might be. Elon Musk wants to download your brain. He's the entrepreneur behind Tesla cars and SpaceX, of course, but he's troubled by where artificial intelligence is leading humanity. So he's trying to stay one step ahead with an idea to implant our brains with computer chips. For some people, it's a sci-fi step too far. Really excited to show you what we've got. I think it's going to blow your mind. All of your senses, your sight, hearing, feeling, um, the pain, uh, these are all electrical signals sent by neurons to your brain. But these all, can all be solved with an implantable neural link. This is sort of what it looks like. <laughs> this is our little device. Uh, it is, that, that thing at the bottom is just to hold the threads in place because they're just like little fine wire, wires. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. All you can see afterwards is this tiny scar. And if it's under your hair, you can't see it at all. In fact, I could have a Neuralink right now, and you wouldn't know. Maybe I do. So, uh, and it, it's also got all, all the things that you would expect to see, the sensors you'd expect to see in a smartwatch uh, or a phone. Uh, so there's actually a lot of functions that this device could do uh, r related to monitoring your health and warning you about a possible heart attack or stroke or other uh, damage, as well as uh, sort of convenience features like playing music. Um, you do a lot. It's sort of like if your phone went at your brain or something. Um, yeah, maybe that's not a great analogy. Um, anyway, so it's also inductively charged. So um, it's charged in the same way that you, char you charge a smartwatch or a phone. Um, and so you can use it all day, uh, charge it at night, and have full functionality. So in terms of getting a link, essentially, 
Uh, you remove uh, about a coin sized piece of skull, then the robot inserts the electrodes, uh, then the device replaces the portion of skull that was removed, and we, we basically close that up with actually a super glue, which is how a lot of wounds are closed. So this is our surgical robot, and we actually ultimately want this robot to do uh, essentially the entire surgery. Uh, so in, in everything from, from in, incision, uh, removing the, the skull, inserting the electrodes, placing the device, um, and then um, closing things up. So does it actually work? Uh, what I'm excited to show you, um, I call it like the, the, the three little pigs demo. Well, I'll walk right over and show you. So what we have in pen number one is Joyce, uh, and she does not have an implant. <laughs> Obviously healthy and happy. So here's Dorothy, um, and in the case of Dorothy, um, Dorothy used to have an implant, and then we removed the implant. So this is uh, an imp a very important thing to uh, demonstrate is reversibility. So if you, if you have a neural link, and then you decide you don't want it, or you want to get an upgrade, and the neural link is removed, um, is it removed in such a way that you are still healthy and happy afterward? <laughs> Man, Gertrude, are you serious? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, the beauty of live demos. This is real live demo. All right, here we go, great, okay. Great. This is a, a high-energy pig. Um, all right. Gertrude, thanks for coming out. Um, so what you're, the, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. So this neural link connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. Uh, she's had the implant for two months. So this is a healthy and happy pig with an implant that is two, month old, two months old and working well. Yeah. And we've been able to show that you can actually have multiple neural links implanted. Um, and again, healthy and happy and indistinguishable from a normal pig. Did you go through the secret files, the UFO documents? <laughs> Because if I Maybe. was president, that would be the first thing I did. You know, it's funny. My daughters asked the very same question. They did? Yeah. Would you be allowed to tell your daughters what was in those files? Uh, no. You would not? No. Now that you're out of office, you can do anything you want, right? True. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not telling you. You're not telling me. <laughs> you're not telling me what? Are you not telling me that you looked at them? I'm not telling you nothing. <laughs> Aliens exist, and President Trump knows about it. That's according to Israel's former space security chief. In an interview with an Israeli newspaper, he said, the aliens have been waiting until today for humanity to develop and reach a stage where we will understand in general what space and spaceships are. NBC News Chief Global Correspondent Bill Neely explains this one. Hi, Alison. Well, this is quite a story, and it comes from the man who headed Israel's space security program for nearly 30 years. Chaim Eshed is making the extraordinary claim that the United States and Israel have been in contact with a group of aliens for years, not immigrants, but extraterrestrials. He has called them the Galactic Federation of Aliens, and he says President Trump is aware of the existence of these aliens and had been on the verge of revealing their secrets, he claims but was asked not to do so by the Federation in order to prevent what he calls mass hysteria. Well, the retired general says the US and Israel have kept it from the public because, quotes, humanity isn't ready and the aliens don't want to reveal themselves until humanity can evolve, he says, and understand what space really is. Well, the good news is that he claims an agreement has been reached between the US government and the aliens, a contract to do experiments here there's also, he says, a secret underground base on Mars where there are American and alien representatives. 
Now, this former head of a branch of Israel's defense ministry is 87. He was very well respected, at least until now. And he said all this in an interview with an Israeli newspaper in Hebrew, but it's really taken off after parts of it were published in English by the Jerusalem Post today. He says he's come forward now in the hope that his news will be accepted as true. He notes that if he'd made these claims five years ago, he would have been hospitalized, but now he says, I've got nothing to lose. Well, so far, President Trump has not tweeted about this, though remember a year ago, he did set up the Space Force as the fifth branch of the US Armed Forces. Well, we did ask the White House, the Department of Defense, and Israeli officials to comment. So far, they have not responded to the NBC News request, and I wonder if they ever will. We know that there are billions of stars and planets literally out there, and the universe is getting bigger. We know from our fancy telescopes that just in the last two years, more than 20 planets have been identified outside our solar system that seem to be far enough away from their suns and dense enough that they might be able to support some form of life. So it makes it increasingly less likely that, we're alive, that they might be able to support some form of life. So it makes it increasingly less likely that we're alone. Oh, you're trying to give me a hint that there are aliens. <laughs> no, I'm trying to tell you I don't know. Oh, you're trying to give me a hint that there are aliens. <laughs> no, I'm trying to tell you I don't know. Oh. But if we were visited someday, I wouldn't be surprised. I just hope that uh, it's not like Independence Day. Yeah, right. Maybe that it's, a, you know, a, a conflict. Well, now we have friends. Maybe the only way to unite this incredibly divided world of ours. They're out there. We better think of how all the differences among people on Earth would seem small if we felt threatened by a space invader. That's the whole theory of independence. You're right. You're Everybody right. Everybody gets together and makes nice and, you know. If I was the president, and it's unlikely that that is ever going to happen. You never know. If I was the president, it was unlikely that I was going to be president. <laughs> the moment I was inaugurated, my hand would, would just, it'd still be hot from touching the Bible, and I would immediately race to uh, wherever they hold, have the files uh, about Area 51 and UFOs, yeah. and I go through everything to find out what happened. But did you do that? That's why you will not be president. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's, that, that's the first thing that you would do. Um, <laughs> the the aliens won't life. let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you reveal all their secrets. <laughs> They, they, they exercise strict control over us. Now, you know, there are a lot of people that are going to examine your, your facial expressions here, um, every, every twitch, everything, oh, no. and say, and of course, so did you look? Did you see? Did you explore? I, I, I can't reveal anything. Oh, really? Because President Clinton said he did go right in, and he did check, and there was nothing. Well, you know, that's, that's what we're instructed to say. <laughs> Twitter hit list continues. The social media site has permanently suspended more than 70,000 accounts accused of promoting conspiracy theories or violent rhetoric, including, most prominently, banning Donald Trump from the platform Friday, concluding his tweets constituted a risk to public safety and could potentially lead to more violence. In the wake of these efforts, Twitter stocks tumbled as much as 12 percent Monday and continued to fall today. The crackdown has drawn ire and criticism from some Republican lawmakers who say Twitter is attacking the president's right to free speech. And U.S. lawmakers aren't alone. A spokesman for German Chancellor Angela Merkel said Chancellor Merkel criticized Twitter's Trump ban, arguing legislators, not private companies, should decide on free speech and expression regulations. European Union Commissioner Thierry Breton called the chaos on Capitol Hill the, quote, 9-11 moment of social media, writing in an op-ed for Politico that, by banning Donald Trump, social media companies have, quote, recognized their responsibility, duty, and means to prevent the spread of illegal viral content. They can no longer hide their responsibility towards society by arguing that they merely provide hosting services. Yet, he goes on to write that the fact a CEO can pull the plug on POTUS's loudspeaker without any checks and balances is perplexing, adding, it is not only confirmation of the power of these platforms, but it also displays deep weaknesses in the way our society is organized in the digital space. 
So it was Google, oh yeah, Google, yeah, and we just got a search engine, we can find what we like, that's great, eh? And social media, oh, you post to your friends, you can say what you like, there's no censorship, isn't it great? Mm. And then it builds, and then it builds, and then it builds, and now you've reached a point now with Facebook where it claims 2.2 uh, billion active users in a global population of 7.5 billion. You have um, this 90% monopoly on search engines, uh, um, searches of Google. You have YouTube, which has got basically a, a monopoly on the posting of internet videos, which is owned by Google. And once this monopolistic situation uh, was reached, then they started saying, okay, now we've got this much control we're gonna start deciding what you see and what you don't see. It's fishing line out. Oh, it ain't great, yeah, right. say what you like, you know, no censorship, ooh, gotcha. And so we now have Facebook that is systematically um, censoring information outside of the official narrative. Um, we have this situation with uh, Facebook and Twitter now, which is known as ghost banning, uh, which they do to me, which is you post it, but all the people that would like to see it and I've liked or, or followed would like to see it, they don't see it. Only a few of them see it. The vast majority don't see it because of ghost banning. They just don't circulate it. Um, and you ha now have, um, as blatant as can be, YouTube is just deleting large, large and greater all the time numbers of, ch of channels that are uh, presenting a different uh, narrative to the, uh, to the official one in, uh, uh, across the swathe of subjects that are just they... being deleted. They're just being deleted without any explanation. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So we see that it is the plan of God to establish a new world order. Now, what does that have to do with what's happening in the earth today? Here's what you need to know. Satan, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, is the God of this world right now presently ruling over the world. It also says in the book of Isaiah chapter number 14, I believe beginning at verse number 12, that Satan's goal was to ascend to the throne of God, to be like God, to sit among the congregation, to take God's place. He is not, he is not an originator. He's not an originalist. Satan is a counterfeiter. And so he knows that God's plan is to establish a new world order, and he says, well, I'm going to establish a new world order. And so he seeks to establish his own order underneath his own power. Are you getting this? So if we are not to be ignorant concerning his devices, and if we are going to pray for our governments, we must know what's happening around the world. There's more to spiritual warfare than praying. The battle for information right now is a spiritual battle. In fact, whenever you see in the, battle, in the Bible the comparisons between light and darkness, that's speaking of ignorance versus knowledge. So there is a spiritual battle between ignorance and knowledge. And the tech giants and many in the media and the monopolies that are taking place there are seeking to deprive you of knowledge. Gaining knowledge is spiritual warfare. Are you with me? So it doesn't matter if what I'm about to share with you is exciting or whether it thrills that conspiracy theory, you know, itch you want scratched. What matters is are you getting gospel information? And a lot of people are going to be upset when they start to realize that even self-censorship doesn't seem to help them. They can dance around a topic. They can try to find alternative words. They can do 
everything in their power to not cross YouTube's guidelines and they can never get a community strike and still at the end of the day wake up and find that their channel is completely demonetized or completely gone because YouTube does not agree with their opinions. YouTube does not agree with their facts. YouTube only wants to put out there what the mainstream media is willing to tell you. And because of this, channels like mine have been completely shadow banned on YouTube. And so it's really hard to find my videos or to get notifications when I upload a video because YouTube does not want this information to spread around at all. So is it true that there are powerful alliances that seek to replace national sovereignty with the new world order? You better believe it. Is it true that the Antichrist spirit is already in the earth? The Antichrist spirit seeks to bring a one-world government, a one-world monetary system, a, a worldwide socialist system, a worldwide religion. That is the Antichrist spirit. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. On October 31st, 2020, which is Halloween, there was a special Simpsons episode that went over this year's election and how Homer could not decide who to vote for. But then the episode cuts to Inauguration Day. But it was not a normal one, not a normal one at all, as we see Homer armed on top of a roof with a gun, while Springfield was lying in ruins just below him. Robots roamed the streets and four skeleton horsemen flew through the sky, each holding a banner. One saying famine, another pestilence, and a third which said war. Now, I guess that this is what everyone is hoping will not happen, as this has been one of the most tense elections of all time, with both sides really hating each other. So as long as what happens in The Simpsons doesn't happen, it'll most definitely be a very good thing, as no one wants to see a war break out or something crazy, especially with how bad 2020 has been so far. ...capital from where we are reporting to you. It is a stunning spectacle, uh, to say the very least, if not historic. Nobody knows exactly how this is going to turn out, but let me take you through the explanation of how this has happened. Uh, step by step. First of all, this is a crowd of people who are pro-Trump supporters, the majority of which believe that the president somehow won the election, even though it is obviously not true. President Trump spoke to them earlier today and asked them to protest on his behalf by going to the Capitol, which is exactly what they have done. Up to there, everything seemed somewhat normal until the crowd started breaching the walls of the Capitol and have now actually gotten inside of the Capitol. As a result, tear gas has been used by police who are having a devil of a time trying to keep these people out of that building. Chaos has now ensued, at least in some quarters, as police try and figure out what they are going to do. Part of the frustration is that the Republican Party, in the form of its two most important members, that would be Vice President Mike Pence, has decided to send a letter to the president saying he will do what he is constitutionally bound to do by law, and that is affirm the presidency of Joe Biden. Good night, America. You've just elected the last president of the United States. You just elected the last president of the United States, Michael Moore, right. in studio here in New York. Your, right. your response to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I think, you know, the, um, the United States that we know now, for better or worse, won't be the United States that we know after four years of Donald Trump. So. I'm on the Office of Congress Library website and I came across this book written in 1893. Look at the title. The title is Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey. The book is about a boy named Baron Trump who found a secret portal 
and time travel. But that's not the crazy part. Hashtag wait for it. Baron Trump is Donald Trump's son. Look at his face. Check this out. It really resembles the art in this book. Wow. In the book, Baron Trump had a mentor he looked up to named, guess what? Dawn. But it gets better. All the stuff in the book takes place in Russia. Millennia Trump is from Slovenia. That's Donald Trump's wife. So, four years later, in 1896, the same author writes a sequel to the book, but he calls it The Last President. And this is when stuff's about to get real. This book is about a very wealthy man who lived in New York on Fifth Avenue who ran for president but wasn't expected to win. Trump Tower is on 725 Fifth Avenue, New York. Wow. This is like legit tingles down my back, my spine. This is crazy. In the book, when he won, it surprised everybody and people started rioting and protesting and after his inauguration, he started signing executive orders. But there's more. Remember this book was written over 124 years ago. But anyways, after his inauguration, he started picking people for his cabinet and guess who was one of those people? Lafay Pence. Secretary of Agriculture Lafay Pence. Do you, Mike Pence Mike Pence is vice president. Like legitimately. Let's take a breath here. Get you a sip of your coffee. This is real. Like this is real and it's about to get even crazier. In 1943, one of the most famous inventors named Nikolai Tesla died from a blood clot. Before his death, he claimed he had built a time machine and used it to travel back in time and in the future. After he died, the United States government took all of his inventions and notes the name of the office that seized all of the work was the Office of Alien Property. After they looked through it, they passed it on to the FBI. And that's a real office. Check it out. The Office of Alien Property is legitimate. You can give it a Google. You can fact check all this stuff. After they gave up on trying to figure out his inventions, they hired an outside engineer who could understand the work of Nikolai Tesla. And guess who this dude was? John G. Trump. They hired John G. Trump. I'm not joking. John Trump is Donald Trump's grandfather, but after studying the time machine notes and inventions of Nikola Tesla, he told the government he didn't find anything. Could he have lied to keep the invention to himself and out of the hands of the government? Fun fact, Donald Trump's mama's name is Mary and his father's middle name is Christ and he was born on the night of the total lunar eclipse. Mary, here's the facts right here, Mary Ann Trump and Frederick Christ Trump. And yes, he was born June 14th, 1946. The total lunar... E oh man. Like this is... This is a lot. This is a lot. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge. A new era. Freer from the threat of terror. Stronger in the pursuit of justice and more secure in the quest for peace. An era in which the nations of the world, East and West, North and South, can prosper and live in harmony. A hundred generations have searched for this elusive path to peace, while a thousand wars raged across the span of human endeavor. And today that new world is struggling to be born. A world quite different from the one we've known, a world where the rule of law supplants the rule of the jungle, a world in which nations recognize the shared responsibility for freedom and justice. 
Are you serious? Are you serious, guys? Uh, wow! Are you ready for Doomsday? Or is it the rapture? Or is it the beginning of the tribulation period? Or is it Armageddon? People are wondering, or maybe the start of Gog and Magog, or the rise of the Antichrist, December 21st. Is it the end of the world? Well, the Mayans felt it was the end of their calendar, December 21st, 2012. But they were using the Julian calendar, which had 11 extra days on it per year. If you take the 268 years that we stopped using the Julian calendar and replaced it with the Gregorian calendar, and then and added that back to the 268 years, that means really December 21st, 2012 is eight years later, which is actually December 21st, 2020. It's also the winter solstice. It's also the great conjunction. I mean, something biblical is going on here, guys, with the signs of the second coming of Christ. A quick nerd alert here. Set those intentions now. Why? Because as the song is singing, we are entering the dawn of Aquarius. And that's not all. Tonight, the two largest planets in our solar system will put on a show that has not been seen in centuries. You may not get another chance to see it in your lifetime. Mark Strassman shows you why you should go outside and look at the sky at sunset. Astronomer Christopher Dupree is about to see something hidden from Earth since Galileo first pointed his telescope at the stars. Wow, they're both in the finder. I've never seen that before. Our solar system's two biggest planets in one viewfinder. That's Jupiter down to the right, Saturn up to the left. That's awesome. All month, just after sunset, sky watchers have captured the pair of planets slowly coming together in the southwest sky. Tonight, they'll overlap appearing to merge into a single source of light, an astronomical conjunction. In 18 years, precisely, the planets will align ever so nicely. Aye, verse, aye. The time to act will be at hand. Unleash the titans, you monstrous bad. Mm -hmm. Then the once proud Zeus will finally fall, and you, Hades, will rule all! Yes, Hades will! When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order. Thank you for watching Up TV. If you like this video and would love to see more, check out these great videos here. And don't forget to subscribe to Up TV and Up TV 2 for even more great videos. <laughs>